Hi, I'm here today to talk about uh, the short essay written by Duncan Watts about why everything is not obvious. Uh, so it's it's kind of an overview of, of the paper and I'm going to talk about the key questions that are asked and the kind of answers that, that Duncan Watts provides here. Um, and and the, the four primary questions you could say that he's asking in this essay here is, is why do we often think that social science is obvious after the fact? Why, what is it about social science that seems different from quite a few of the other sciences, for instance, physics or engineering? Um, you could talk to an every layman on the, on, on the street and, and they will have an opinion and they will think that they know something about unemployment or management or strategy. Uh, and then often results that we get might seem obvious. And then sort of the point, one of the key points of this article is then to argue and show, well, it actually, it's actually not. Social sciences are not as obvious as it might seem. Um, they are particular and are different in, in certain ways than, for instance, the natural sciences. Um, and just also short indication of well, what's then the solution? What, how do we solve this particular challenge here? So it's, it's, it's a really foundational philosophy of science perspective that also has implications for how we can actually do science. And in particular, question three, but actually also sort of the overall essay very strongly relates to the Nelson paper that, that is also on the curriculum for, for this class here. Okay, so to try to create a contrast, sort of quite drastic and radical contrast to what social science is about, let's try to think about a, an example from physics that is, at least to me, quite mind-blowing. So we have a guy called Cavendish. He uh, worked in his own lab in, uh, in England in the late 19th century. And he built a device, sort of this spig here, uh, more or less a wooden device, but it had some, some, some metal balls and some strings and, and things that were attached to each other. And basically what he was doing in his own basement in England in the 19th century was measuring the weight of the earth. He was about 1% off, it later turns out, with modern science. I think that's, that's reasonably okay. So again, sitting in his basement, being able to measure the weight of the Earth, and since we knew Newton's laws of gravity, he could also infer the weight of all the other planets. I think it's fair to say that this, these results were not obvious at all. If you talk to the regular person on the street, they would not have been able to figure this out. They probably wouldn't even have been able to figure out that you could measure this weight and you could infer these things. And then you could ask yourself, what is it that we social scientists or in business administration, what, what can we do with, in our lab or in our uh, sitting in our office trying to figure things out? It, it's certainly a very different field that we're in. Um, and the, sort of one point that is often made that that's, see, it should be obvious that social sciences should actually be less hard than physics or like literally that's the expression that we use rocket science we can send rockets to the moon and 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 surely that's more difficult than figuring out human behavior the moon is pretty far away and that's sort of the puzzle we're in what is it about social science that seems particular let me try to get to this from from another angle um trying to illustrate this obviousness so following the second world war um there was a really large-scale effort to try to investigate the, what it was like to be a soldier. So they were interviewing 600,000 soldiers. Um, it's quite a, a large case study. And one of the key questions was, who handles life as a soldier better? And surely people from the countryside. They're used to physical exercise. They're used to being out in the open, maybe sleeping out in the open, handling different uh, materials, and just living a quite a rough life. And and whenever the main researcher here, he presented this story, this was also how he, he told it, and, and people in the audience would often go, surely you didn't have to interview 600,000 people to get to that result. But actually, and that was a trick that he often pulled with the audience, it was actually people from the city. It was, it was soldiers that had grown up in the city that were the best, that, that could cope with being a soldier the best. They were used to being in a uniform, they were used to working in a hierarchy, they were used to working at a specific, specific time schedule, doing what others tell them to do. Um, so this is a typical situation in social science where both kinds of answers, completely opposite answers, could sort of seem obvious uh, when we are told about them. 
Um, here is just a slightly longer explanation and the link to the story about the the American soldier and obviousness. And we can think of other examples here that from psychology that it might seem obvious that if you want someone to say yes to a small request, giving a bad reason is surely better, uh, worse than no reason at all. Oh, if you want to be happier, count as many blessings as you have, count as many things that makes you happy as possible, surely that's better than only counting a few. We can think of other examples as well. Right? Surely. But again, um, as, as research has shown, it's actually the case that giving a bad reason for, in this case, the research was done on standing in a queue of getting to a copying machine, and, and, and if you then gave a bogus reason for why you cut in line in, in front of the queue, you said, I need to make copies. Well, surely everyone here in the queue needs to do that. It was a queue to the copying machine. But actually, it's just as good to say this bogus bad reason as it was to give a good reason because I'm in a rush. Uh, and the slide here illustrates some of the other examples. And one could come up with a range of other examples that, that what might seem obvious is not necessarily so. Um, but again, this is a particular situation that we're in. That that we, if it it it, it seems obvious, and we, we should be, but we are much better at rocket science. A field that does not seem obvious. We can send rockets to the moon, or even people to the moon, while figuring out what movie is going to be a hit, or um, whether we should change the unemployment rate with how much, or whether an advertisement actually works. Those are really, really difficult questions, and, and, and these seem to be basically much harder than, than rocket science. At least we're not making as much progress with them. So the question is, and that's also what Watson is writing about here, why is it that social science seems obvious? What is it about this field that is quite particular? And, and for one is that it's, it's, it's familiar. So we, when we ever we work, for instance, in business administration, whatever bachelor project you'll write or master thesis, you might write about how motivated people are or a stock market or company strategy. And these are all topics that, that, we, that we live, we read about them in the newspaper. We, we think about them and we might have opinions about what is good management, how should a manager behave. Surely this is the right way to do it. We don't in the same way live in a world of atoms or black holes or quants or whatever they are dealing with in physics. Um, so that that is sort of one element that can lead to our science being particular. It's it's familiar. We face it every day, so surely we know something about it. But it's also related to human bias. We'll be talking more about in um, in a later lesson that we tend to after rationalize after the fact. We tend to, when we've been presented with some information or a solution to something, we tend to think, surely that's the way it was supposed to be. I could have told you that in advance, even though that we might not have been able to do that. So this after rationalization also makes things appear more obvious after the fact. And then I think also key element that common sense is, is usually quite effective in everyday life. We, we get, I mean, it's quite efficient that we, that we know a lot about how the world works or when we enter a room, when we, we deal with objects, we know a lot about, we, we're quite effective in, in the way that we can cope with everyday life. Um, on the other hand, common sense also has an answer to almost everything. Birds of a flock flock together. Birds of a feather, sorry, flock together, but opposites attract. It's bad to sweat the small stuff, but good to be detail-oriented. And we can sort of come up with all sorts of common sense answers to lots of life's predicaments and challenges. So so what's here lists a number of, of elements that, that shows how s social sciences and in business administration in particular has a particular nature and, and can seem obvious because it's familiar, because it the is about stuff that we deal with on an everyday basis and, and makes us think we know what the social world is all about. But, and that's really also then one of the key points, it's not. It's not obvious. Predictions and explanations are really, really hard in the social sciences because we live in such a complex world. When we try to explain whether a company strategy is going to be successful, we have to take into account how the employees are going to develop it and how they're going to execute it and how competitors are going to react to it and whether there's a financial crisis going on at the moment and how customers are going to react and, and et cetera, et cetera. There are all these different levels and they all influence and interact. 
um, which makes the social world extremely complex in a, in a literal sense of that world. And we'll get back to that in a, in a later lesson as well. But humans are also particular in the sense that they can change their behavior and change their mind. If we figured out how the planets, they evolve or uh, go around the sun um, in a solar system, not going to change behavior tomorrow. They're going to continue in the same direction no matter what we figure out and, and what explanations we, we create. While human beings, if you tell them about a certain advertisement strategy and why companies do what they do, customers might react differently to while having that awareness. Um, so, so that also makes the social science world quite particular and, and particularly hard. Uh, because human beings are not static and just continue in the absolute same direction as many elements in a, in, a, in a physical world would do. And then also, we often don't know the counterfactuals. We often don't know what, what, what could have happened but didn't. Um, Taleb has a good example in his book, The Black Swan, about the greatest the person that could have had been the greatest hero and could have had the greatest impact would have been the one that had, had come up with the law saying that all pilot doors have to be bulletproofed and locked which could have enabled uh, avoiding uh, the 9-11 terrorism incident in the U United States um, if there had been such a law, but there wasn't. But what of all the different laws and rules and, and, and activities that have been put in place that, that, that we, where we don't know what it actually prevented? Again, we live in a very particular kind of social world. It's complex. Human beings can change the behavior. We don't know exactly what impact our activities and actions have because um, we don't know what, what could have happened. Here are a few more quotes from, from the paper on why social science is hard and, and, and different from physics. So that was the, the essence of the paper that I wanted to present. I wanted to focus on well, what are the key questions that are being asked in this quite short essay. Um, and I wanted to give this overview and this understanding of, of social science. I think it's quite important for, for understanding the challenges that we face and, and the situation we are in in our discipline. Uh, it has some consequences for how to do science, which I'll get back to in, in later lessons. And then in, in particular, I think it's also a good thing to read this paper because it relates so directly to, to another paper, Nelson, that we're going to get back to in, 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 a, in a later lesson that, so to further dive into what is it about social science, why is it it's a particular field, and, and what philosophy of science implications does it have for the specific choices that we should make when we're doing a bachelor project, when we're doing a research project, or whatever challenge we are, we are facing.